A company's valuation is expected to be the present value of its future cash flow. However, if you don't understand the difference between net income and free cash flow, it could lead to a lot of bad investment decisions. In today's update, I want to differentiate both net income and free cash flow and then follow on with an example of how destructive it could be on the outset seeing free cash flow without understanding where that free cash flow came from. Without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Let's start off by understanding what net income is and free cash flow. By misjudging the differences between net income and free cash flow it could lead to misunderstanding an opportunity that exists in a specific business. Since 2020, a lot of companies have come to the market with little to no, maybe even negative net income and very high free cash flow. And if you're only focused on the free cash flow, the cash flowing into the business it might seem like the business is doing very well, but that may not be a fair reflection of the opportunity that exists from an, an investor's perspective. So the second part of this update, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of examples of what we're seeing and the misjudgments that people are making by focusing on free cash flow. Nothing's perfect in terms of metrics in a business, but understanding the nuances behind each of these metrics will help you make better decisions in the future. Okay, let's start off with net income. At the very top here of the income statement, what we see is what's known as gross profits. This is our revenues. This is the sales that we're making minus the direct cost to produce a product. Anything that's direct to producing a product, whether it's direct labor or raw materials, that's included in the cost of goods sold. These are direct costs. Now that I have a product built, I now have to sell that. It might have marketing expenses. So they're indirect expenses to sell that product to the end customer. So what net income is, it's direct costs plus indirect costs plus financing costs, whether that's interest, whether it's mergers and acquisitions, restructuring, asset write downs, there are financing costs. And finally, tax. Tax is unavoidable unless you want to go to jail, certainly if you're displaying a, a profit within your business. So net income is taking direct costs, indirect costs, financing costs, and tax away from revenue. And what's left over is essentially the profit to the business as measured by net income. So what is free cash flow? Well, free cash flow is taking cash from operations, which we have highlighted, minusing away capital expenditures, and as you see at the bottom here, we end up with our free cash flow. And in this case, free cash flow is 73.9 million with this example, whereas the net income is 385 million. So why are they so different from each other? Well, first and foremost, we are gonna exclude out capital expenditure, but that aside, let's have a look at cash from operations. There's a couple of different non-cash expense that exist in the income statement. That includes depreciation and amortization, which we went over in the example for the income statement. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link above if you'd like to check it out. Breaks down how to understand an income statement. Depreciation and amortization are non-cash expenses and stock-based compensation are non-cash expenses. Both of these are included as expenses in the income statement, but added back as cash, non-cash expenses in cash from operations as well as that the company could be increasing their purchases of inventories, paying down their accounts receivables at a faster pace, or representing maybe a loss on equity investments, mark to market. And that gives us cash from operations. When you exclude out your capital expenditure, we end up with our free cash flow. And in this case, the free cash flow is significantly below net income. What we wanna move on to the next phase is we wanna focus on items such as stock-based compensation. So we often hear a company is worth the present value of its free cash flow. Now free cash flow, as we mentioned a moment ago, includes non-cash expenses being added back to the business. If you checked out the video breaking down the income statement, you'll understand that maintenance capital expenditure is a real expense to the business. It's not gonna add any new incremental growth in terms of net income. There's no operating leverage there. And when we're looking at stock-based compensation, it is a real expense because it's increasing the outstanding shares, which we're gonna have a deeper look in just a moment. As of right now, what we're seeing in the market is management parading their Trojan horse of free cash flow, which is dominated by stock-based compensation, which is a real expense. I do hear the argument that suggests that stock-based compensation should be included in the financing section which would change people's perspective on stock-based compensation, but I highly disagree with that view, and here's why. So let's have a look at this example. We're gonna use Snapchat, we're gonna have a look at its cash flow statement, 
And then I've got a little bit of an example to share with you why there can be an awful lot of challenges with focusing on free cash flow. May not give you a true and fair representation of the opportunity that exists in the business. If you're wondering where all this data comes from, comes from Ticker Terminal. We do have a link in the description. I'd really appreciate if you used our link. So let's have a look at this. Snapchat. We're going to start off here with its cash flow statement. Let's understand its free cash flow. Cash from operations, 244 million, minus capital expenditures, 106.95 million, equals 137 million, 910,000 dollars. Positive free cash flow. All great, right? Absolutely fantastic. Not really. If we go back up to the top of the cash flow statement in cash from operations, we can see net income. Net income is minus 1.11 billion. It's very negative relative to its cash flow. So now let's try and understand where that comes from. Well, the cash flow is actually positive despite $107 million in, in capital expenditures. So where exactly is this positive cash flow coming from? Well, let's have a look at the usual suspects. As you can see here, we have depreciation and amortization. These are non-cash expenses. And in a lot of cases, they are vital to the business. You can't avoid them. If you need assets, whether it's to deliver bread, well, you are gonna need a van and that is gonna depreciate. So you can't, you can't avoid in a lot of cases, depreciation and amortization. They're non-cash expenses. It's not really something I'd be too concerned about provided um, the capital expenditures are delivering a strong return on invested capital. In this case, the reason why there's such a massive disparity between cash flow and net income is stock-based compensation. Snapchat is roughly between 12 and $13 billion in market cap. And as you can see trailing 12 months, we've seen a 10% increase in the outstanding shares. $1.234 billion in stock-based compensation. Now, over the past 12 months, management did buy back shares, $500 million worth which seems like more of an exit strategy for management, which is quite frustrating if you're invested in the business. So when we're looking at these numbers here, you could say, yes, but Rob, stock-based compensation is a financing metric. We use that in or instead of raising capital. That might be fair and you could put it down here into financing. However, year in, year out, if you're diluting the shareholder by 10%, it has a significant cost. So at the top here, what I have here is Snapchat. I've got the total shares outstanding, and we're looking at where the outstanding shares were from 2017 all the way into the latest quarter. 1.222 billion, all the way up to 1.648.97 billion shares outstanding. If you're wondering where this data came from, it came from Ticker Terminal. We do have a link in the description. I'd really appreciate if you used our link, if you're considering using their site. From 2017 into 2020, we've seen an increase in the outstanding shares by almost 35% despite a 500 million buyback. It's pretty insane. So let's have a look at the destruction in terms of our forward expected returns due to a massive increase in stock-based compensation over the last couple of years, despite terrible performance from the company. So here's an example. In this example, the market cap of this company is $10,000. The net income is $1,000 and there's a thousand shares outstanding. So each share has a share price of $10 per share. $1 of earnings per share or 10 times price to earnings. This is the first example. Now let's dilute the outstanding shares by 35%. We end up with a market cap of 13,500 if you're very lucky. One of two things can happen. Market cap stays elevated or it get, gets crushed lower and you've got negative returns moving forward. But in this case, let's just assume that the, the shares are still priced at $10. It's increased by 35%, so we've got a market cap of 13,500. We still got the same net income. We still got the same net income, $1,000. Meaning that when we divide 1,350 shares by $1,000, we're only making 74 cents per share, which means that the price to earnings is now 13.5 or 35% more expensive. We didn't earn any more money. And so as we move forward, stock-based compensation can erode your forward expected returns. If the fair value of the market is 10 times relative to its peers and its industry, every time you see a 35% depreciation in terms of the market value, you're likely to see forward expected returns diminish, diminish, diminish. And that's the major difference between net income and free cash flow and some of the challenges with only focusing on free cash flow. In the example we showed originally, there was a lot of investments made. 
cash investments, dividends paid, and we see net income positive relative to free cash flow significantly below that net income. What were they doing with that cash? Reinvesting back in the business and paying out dividends, distributions back to shareholders. It's a positive and solid free cash flow. Whereas in this example, these are some of the challenges with Snapchat, where stock-based compensation over the past two years has completely eroded expected returns for investors. If you're interested, we also cover a breakdown of all three financial statements. We look at profitability metrics and efficiency metrics for businesses. Thank you very much for your support and have a great day.